Hey, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for, for coming to this press conference that I invited you all to. Um, I brought you all here to kind of talk about some of the allegations that were made earlier in the week. Before I kind of get into that, I want to I want to begin by acknowledging the inquiry and the importance of transparency and keeping the public informed and in working with you folks, the media. I want to emphasize some of the legal and ethical obligations as well. Uh, I want to explain that as DOC commissioner, I have a legal and ethical duty to protect the integrity of ongoing investigations to ensure that justice is served. And um, I also want to reassure the media and the community that I am committed to providing accurate and timely updates as soon as it is as soon as it's appropriate to do so without compromising the investigation. And and if and when possible, I also want to provide general information about some of the investigative processes without divulging specifics that could jeopardize the case. Essentially, I, and I and I also want to express my willingness and the department's willingness to cooperate. So essentially, you know, as a DOC commissioner, I wear many hats. I do not have a public information officer. I am the public information officer until uh, I have a budget to hire one, right? Um, and that's okay. Um, and, and as a commissioner, I have to wear many hats. I have to put that hat on the commissioner, the PIO, sometimes even the director, the warden, the deputy commissioner, the captain. Um, and that's okay. Uh, this is what I signed up for. This is what I'm here to do. Uh, but I but I need to stress to to you folks that, you know, when you're hitting me up at 5 p.m. for a statement, I may I I I, I could be in the middle of something. And I'm I'm not going to be able to get to you to answer. All right. I understand the pressing need, and to just to just practice. We're, restraint in, in, in releasing some of these whatever information that you're getting in print going making it go to print right away give me an opportunity to kind of get things together because I could be working and finding it I mean there's so many different things and moving parts that as law enforcement professionals uh, and executives in this position I can't just I can't release certain things just be patient that's all I ask uh, now you see the direct result of jumping the gun, right? Um, I just ask to just stick to the facts because, or just be patient because then when you give me, give me some time, I get to you, I will get to you. Just don't be so compelled to, to put it out there, right? To be the first one. It's like, especially in law enforcement, you know, I, I'm not in another, I'm not, in another agency where I can tell you how everything is and what's going on right then and there. There's, there's all these delicate pieces to the puzzle, right? Especially when it comes to investigations. So with that, I will provide updates as soon as it's feasible to do so. And I wanna manage expectations by kind of explaining some of the details, right, that were withheld temporarily to protect the integrity of the investigation. But transparency is, is a priority, and I know that since the beginning, I've been transparent and open with all of you. Um, I've been doing, my staff, you know, my, my great staff here in my department are doing everything in their part of it to, to, to do things right. Unfortunately, things happen in this business. Things happen. Things happen. It's it's we 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 try to train to be proactive, but then also we need to train to be reactive. And when things are out of our control and things happen, then we need to react. Um, so I just ask, I ask the media to just just practice patience, because you know my eighty year old mom only gets her information from the, from the newspapers. You know there. A lot of our senior citizens aren't tech savvy where they can go on social media or go online and read the paper. And we've already seen the direct result of that. And, and I, just, I just humbly ask to just 
demonstrate some patience. Um, so with that, uh, I'll put it up to questions. So Commissioner Torres, uh, the community doesn't know what's beyond, uh, you know, what's that message is and what has been printed already. So to the extent you're able to, respecting the integrity of the investigation, what are the facts? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Okay, um, the who, um, you know, I, I know the variety when I had not printed out the, the victim's name and then corrected it online. Um, so the victim who's, 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 who's alleging the act is Shana Castro, okay? And then the other individual, the male, is Gerald Sublime. I know the way it was printed on the Variety or even in the Tribune as to Gerald being in the female unit, that was false, okay? Shana was in the male unit. And in this one male section is where Gerald is housed by himself. And thus they are separated. My staff found Shana in the male section, okay? We, and then they immediately did a lockdown of the facility, okay? And my internal affairs, fortunately, was, was, was on shift at the time. As they went to go and um, question Shana, and these are some of the findings that I'm gonna release, okay? As they went to go question Shana, she was caught throwing intimate letters between her and Gerald Sablon in the toilet. We, my staff was able to retrieve that. And then also, in interviewing Gerald Sablon, Gerald Sablon went ahead and provided a bunch of the intimate letters between her and Castro. Um, as soon as I was called when this happened, my staff took Castro to CHC emergency room, and that's where I went to go meet with them. Uh, as we were, as, as they were waiting to, to, for her to be seen by the nurse practitioner, okay? Uh, a rape kit was conducted, DPS was notified. Um, I was there for a couple hours just to, to, to talk with my staff and, you know, really find out what, what, what happened, what transpired. Um, social worker was also called. There was a social worker there as well. And then, um, yeah, DPS was there. There is a case, there is a complaint. Okay, there's a complaint that was made. Uh, we have a blue card that Shana had, 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 had submitted. Uh, and then right now, this, the, it's still ongoing, okay? The case is still ongoing. Those are some of the findings that I'm gonna share with you. And yeah. when and what time, the date and time? This was uh, last week, early Thursday, early Thursday morning, late Wednesday night. And where she was found, females were not allowed there, only males? Yes, females so were not allowed. So the next question. I mean, every, fe, fe, there's a female section and there's a male section. They're separated. This is not co-ed. So the next question is, how was she able to get there? And that's where, given that it's still pending investigation, I'm not going to comment on that. But the nature of it some might assume and i guess this is where we get to the real fact checking is did officers allow it to happen could she have done it on her own or would this is this an environment where officers ha had to be involved because of logistics or movement you know with that with that also i'm, I'm given that it's still pending I, i'm not really gonna I, I can't comment on that um it's not allowed staff are not allowed to allow genders visiting each other in each section. That's not allowed. That I can say. Okay, they're separated, and each section has an officer. So, um, yeah, that's, those cross-gender visits aren't allowed. All right, and then my last question before passing it on is, um, what's being done now? What have you changed, if any, are any officers, uh, you know, no longer working here, or what actions have been <coughs> taken to respond so I have, it doesn't happen no, again? No, sure, sure. I have, um, given that it's, it's still a pending investi investigation. I have three officers who are on admin leave. So, um, you know, in the, 
until we wrap up this investigation, then I could, you know, I, I could brief you on, on, on more of the findings at the end. But yes, three staff are on admin leave. Um, and we've also made some, and again, this is, this is, this is adding some more, I guess you could say, measures, right? Now we're actually really, I'm taking a lot of, I'm, I'm consolidating and, and, and stacking more of my males with other males. I mean, ideally I would like to have that whole area only females, but we don't have the capacity to have a whole pod for just 10, five females, you know? But I made it where it's like, okay, um, Gerald Sablon is no longer in that area, in that pod, and um, He'll be in another area. Um, you know, sometime in May or June, we're going to have uh, brand new surveillance systems placed in, in, in this facility. And I'm also looking into obtaining some grants for body-worn cameras for all my officers to wear for the protection of themselves and the inmates. So crossing my fingers, that's, that's, that's forthcoming in the next, hopefully within this year. And uh, yeah, Some so questions? I have a question. Sure. So, do we have surveillance, um, a surveillance system in that area where it happened? We we not in that area because when when this was when this place was built, they didn't they didn't they only put it in certain areas. So when I came on, I was like, we need to add more here 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 here. So, and I, and from my understanding, that was they had already identified funding, but then I kind of pushed it through. What's our timeline of this internal investigation? When do you expect to conclude it? And then when do you expect to share the findings of your investigations with the officers who are on leave and then? Uh, maybe about a, in a week. You know, I'll be out of pocket all of next week. So <clears throat> give or take maybe two and a half weeks once once the once they wrap up the investigation. Yeah. And you know, what would it cost to hire a Public information officer. That's a great question during a tough financial times like this, Andrew. I honestly, it's not on. It's not on the top of my priority list. On the top of my priority list is 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 um, of course we, we we're, we're going to get the juveniles. We're gonna we're gonna have a, a whole pot once we get the juveniles into the Manolbin Care Center right next door. So that's going to be opening up in May. May six, so you, you folks are all invited to the uh, to the blessing of the Manhogan Care Center, and then um, there's so many moving parts, so many projects going on. I mean, I have contractors here right now who are. Uh, <laughs> I have contractors here right now who are working on the uh, fire sprinkler systems, and then we're we're going to be working on replacing a lot of the HVAC and then adding on to the. Uh, surveillance camera systems as well. All right, Commissioner, I have a question. And Turns just out. so we can clarify, um, yeah. you mentioned that uh, the victim made a complaint with DPS. Can you tell us what the complaint entails? Unfortunately, I don't, it, it's a complaint. There's no charges, not yet. And so, I, I don't know the specifics. So I don't want to, I don't want to talk on But she, she made a complaint, she made a complaint against the other inmate or against like DOC or? I'm going to have to get back to you now, but I know a complaint was made. I don't want to say something in that, on the top of my head, I mean. but a complaint was made. So maybe the, you know, I'm thinking the allegation are right. Are you able to um, disclose the names of the officers? No, I'm not. Can you tell us if they are um, at least like seasoned officers or if they're fairly new? I would say a mixture of both, right? A mixture of both. Um, and again, I, I I know where you're getting out against, but there's still it, it's it's pending in this. I'll I'll share more of that with you later. But as as far as the names, I mean, I. 
let me let me handle my stuff. Let me do what I need to do. Um, yeah. Commissioner, uh, you had a few incidents in your first year alone. Um, I know it's not unique to DOC in the sense that issues like this happen across the nation. It's been well reported on. But what is your comment on everything that has transpired from the escape to this allegation? Are well, things okay here at DOC? Well, why don't we start from why don't we start from when we found a whole bunch of cell phones and and, and drugs, right? Uh, with that finding, I mean, those were a lot of cell phones in my twenty four career. I, that's never happened in my career. Um, but for that amount and to, to have the partnerships with FBI, HSI, they've been super helpful, DPS as well. Um, I mean, with, with a lot of that and what I would share with that is that, that with everything that was presented, that was going on since 2017. 20, 28, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 no, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, five years Five years before I got here, this thing was done. And yeah, you know what? We caught it on my watch. And that that's not taking anything away from, I mean, hey, I'm dealing with it and I'm addressing it. I'm, I'm addressing these things as they come. Yes, there was an escape. And I dealt with it accordingly. I was boots on the ground with my team and we got them within a few hours. Nobody was hurt. Um, and we're going to learn from that. We had an after action review uh, team the very next day with all the partners who were involved. And we're, we're gonna be better because of that. And then a situation like this, um, hey, things happen, human error, negligence, I get it. We're, we're handling it, I'm handling it. So let people think or say whatever they wanna say about me and my leadership. I'm taking care of things. And I can sleep at I can sleep at night and I can look at myself in the mirror and know that that I'm doing my best and my staff are doing their best. And that, you know, we're we're we're, we're throw on top of that the rehabilitation evidence based practice programs that we're doing, throw on top of that the 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 refurbishing and renovating of the kitchen, throw on top of that that we want to get a recycling program down, throw on top of that that, you know, we want to get this criminal justice information system going on. I mean, it, say what they want to say. I'm, I'm, we're, we're, my staff are doing a good job. And don't, and, and again, you know, yeah, they're doing their best and we're making a lot of headway, and I'm proud to be here in this role to, to guide them. And just uh, my, my quick follow-up, um, I know this is a separate matter, but even when the escape happened, the conversation um, was that, how can we uh, move towards housing inmates from Guam if these incidents happen now under our watch? and it would only increase the population. I know that's a separate issue, it doesn't have to do with this, but there is that perception out there that if we can't handle our our own cases now, what more adding inmates from Guam? Do you think it hurts the overall cause that you're pushing for? You know, it depends on who you ask. It depends on who you ask. Um, I, and again, that's just a small amount of people who maybe are against it. And it's okay, I understand. And. And I'm sensitive to that. And like I said, we're, we're going to have a public hearing. We're going to invite the public. I mean, we're going to have that town hall meeting where we're going to come and they're going to hear what we have to say. And I'm going to listen to what they have to say. Um, fact of the matter is, is it, it, it's tough financial times. Okay. Tough financial times. Um, the vision that I have for this department is rehabilitation through operational excellence that enforcement piece and the rehabilitation piece what do i need to get in what do i need to level that up i need funds i need i need money right and by slowly 
alleviating a little bit of the overcrowding with certain inmates to bring them here that's going to allow me to to implement some of these programs that's going to allow me to uh, offer night differential and maybe hazardous pay or some type of incentive pays to retain my staff and then to focus more on training I mean I, you know and, and and not only that is I'm not doing this blindly. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in key individuals to come to this, some of these working group meetings to kind of discuss. I, I brought about the court. I invited the courts, the chief prosecutor, the public defender's office, um, some of our legislators. Um, I'm doing everything I can to kind of involve people and to hear, hear what they have to say. I'm also reaching out to our Vice President Josh Tawal, I'm sorry, he's a treasurer for Correctional Leaders Association who's who's an expert um, with ME in transfer programs out in Idaho. He's an Idaho director of uh, DOC out there. So I'm bringing, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to be as resource, resourceful as I can to, to, to gather this information and see if it's, if it's, if it's something that's feasible for us to do, right? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's also less of a burden on the taxpayer, right? Um, and then, and then it, it, it gives us an opportunity to, to also help out some of our lo other local agencies. So at the end of the day, I'm just trying to help. I'm doing everything in my power to help, not just my department, but our people. And that's where I'm at. I only have one follow-up question. So, you in your findings, you stated that um, officers, when they when they caught when they caught Shina in Gerald's cell, Gerald was able to speak with officers about the letters that she was throwing away. Did Shina get to speak with any of the officers about her allegations about? Yes. What What was her allegation against Gerald? I mean, just like just the allegation of rape. Right? So she did allege rape. I mean, that's what's that's. I mean, I. Uh, that was uh, what was reported in the, in the Variety the very next day. I mean, they went in and published her name too, right off the bat. You know, and again, I'm going to take these matters seriously. But when the expectation from you folks is, hey, just I just ask you, I just ask people to be patient and don't be so rushed to print stuff because then. This is some of the, this is some of the results, right? And we want to, we want to, we want to stick to the facts, right? Um, I want to go visit my eighty-year-old mom and my mom knows the facts and not <laughs> questioning, right? Um, many, many of our monomicals are don't aren't tech savvy, and they do depend on on reading the variety in the Tribune, you know. And and then this is me to ask, and, and this, and this is me. Communicating with with people that I meet, hey, let's demonstrate some objectivity when reading, or, or just no, not being too quick to judge, right? Let's let's let's, let's kind of wait for the facts. Let's give let's give the commissioner some time to respond, right? Um, and I just I just ask you to just kind of put my, put yourself in my shoes for a minute. Right? <laughs> I'm nonstop, and I'm doing anything and everything. We're doing our best. Sorry, Commissioner. I just want to make sure it's explicit. So, how did the reporting impact your investigation? How did it impact my investigation? I think it's. I think more. I think it more. It's more my stance in the misinformation, right? And the fact that I wasn't ready to 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 to, to really to really share any findings with you because I'm, I'm in the middle of doing many other things, right? I mean, that's, but then, you know, as, as you, now, now it's a Friday, and now I can kind of share some of the findings, right? It gives me some time to really verify some of the findings and look at some of the reports instead of saying, instead of just going on based off what, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not at that point where I could just release it. So as far I mean, as you giving can... me time now, I mean, I, I probably could have brought you guys in yesterday, but, you know, 
So as far as you can tell right now, there are only two inmates involved, or are there any other yes, people of interest? Yes, two, two inmates involved. Okay. Yeah. And can you just, do you, sorry, I know this is a specific question, but uh, do you have the demographics, how many male and female inmates DOC has right now? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I would say anyway, are from 10 to 12 females, and then maybe about 160 males. And then the officers assigned to them have to be of the same sex and gender? Or? Yes. No, so, yeah. and this well, with the, with the female, in the female section, it's only female officers. And how many female officers do you have on? I don't have that number okay. right off the bat. But, uh, uh, oh, is it more than 12? No. Oh, okay. Less. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I do. And there's always one on duty? Always? Yes. Always? Yes. One have to be one male and one female officer? One. In the female section, you have to have a female yeah. staff member. Okay. Yeah. A male staff member can't work. And in so, the of the three you mentioned, at least one of them is a female officer, or are all of them male officers? <laughs> <laughs> one of them, I mean, it's, you could assume one of them is a female, right? Okay. So, two male officers and one female officer are the ones on the Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps or yes? I want to be sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes? yes? Okay. One female. Okay. One female, two males. Okay. One female, two males on that in duty. And that's all I can pretty comment on um, until the investigation is complete. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can you share? Are you going off island for um, official or personal? I have, yeah, I'm going on off island official for criminal justice workforce of the future mm -hmm. convening that I was invited to for the, from the U.S. Department of Justice. Maybe you can share what you expect to gain from your um, the conference. Um, sure. Um, I have the invite in front. This is all on their dime, not on the, not on the scene of my taxpayer. Um, we're con they'll be convening in Wichita, Kansas. It's, uh, I guess, I guess they're, they're bringing in uh, directors, commissioner secretaries, um, people in law enforcement or in the criminal justice field to, um, to kind of, uh, identify existing career pipelines along with current and foreseeable shortages and gaps. Uh, the analysis will be presented at the beginning of the two-day convening is, and serve as a jumping off point for discussions. Topics will include the implications of culture on recruiting and retention, rethinking talent and acquisition, bolstering existing career pipelines and creating new ones to prepare a modernized future criminal justice workforce that can adapt to the public's changing expectations around quantity and quality of service delivery. Other topics will include inclusion and setting priorities for public safety services and the extent that people delivering reflect and are prepared to serve that public. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting. Um, it'd be, it'd be giving, it'd be, it'd also give me an opportunity to kind of see what other states are doing with their criminal justice information systems because uh, it's, it's a grant that we're submitting for through CJPA which I in my mind I, I feel like we have a good shot at um, so we've been meeting every day with our, our, our workforce group with uh, CJPA and all of the law enforcement agencies. So just you was going to go find them or just people from CJPA? Just, just okay. yeah just me um, oh I don't know maybe you might have a little bit I don't know who else was, was invited um, in, in, in our common Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Shoot away. <laughs>